In ancient Rome, the gladiators went into the arena with these words on their lips. Let me win, but if I cannot win, let me be brave in the attempt. Today, all of you young athletes are in the arena. Many of you will win, but even more important, I know you will be brave and bring credit to your parents and to your country. Let us begin the Olympics. Thank you. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third National Special Olympic Games. And to you young athletes, congratulations. How we all wish here on the speaker stand that we could perform like you will in the next two days. You will run faster, you will swim faster, you will jump and throw farther than most of us in the stands ever will dream of doing. You are the true champions and we are proud of you. So boys and girls, run your fastest and do your best and good luck tomorrow. should have a daughter named Maria. Thank you. Tonight, tonight, in this great stadium, a new legend is born. You athletes are the heroes of that legend. Here where crowds once cheered for Johnny Lujak and George Gipp, for Joe Theismann and Rocky Blyer, tonight they cheer for you. You are the stars, and the world is watching you. By your presence, you send a message to every village, every city, every nation. A message of hope, a message of victory. The right, the right to play on any playing field, you have earned it. The right to study in any school, you have earned it. The right to hold a job, you have earned it. The right... The right to be anyone's neighbor, you have earned it. The, the, days, the days of separation and segregation are over. You, you Special Olympians have thrilled us on the playing fields of the world. You have taught us that what matters is not power, 
or politics, weapons, or wealth. What truly counts is the courageous spirit and the generous heart. Like, like the heart of the mother whose daughter is special, she walked with her child 16 miles each week from her village to the coach who taught her daughter how to run. This mother is in the stadium tonight and tomorrow, with the world watching, she will see her daughter race in the 200 meter dash. When our, when our hearts are touched and when they are opened, then there is a world on fire. As the philosopher wrote, after conquering the winds and the waves, the tides and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for the second time in the history of the world, man will discover fire. Good luck, Special Olympians. On this day, 23 years ago, Special Olympics was born. Tonight, we open the largest sport event in the world this year, your eighth international summer Special Olympic Games. What? What you do here, your strivings and triumphs, will say to all the people of all the nations torn by ancient feuds and violence and starvation that there is another way for you are the peacemakers competitive but not envious determined but not angry teachers of the profound truth that we can try to do our best without calling on what is worse in the human character. Each time you run and jump and lift or pass a baton, you will say to others everywhere, come to our world where we are free, free to choose our friends, free to choose our sports. In the 1960s, we were told we couldn't run 400 meters. Well, you join us this week as we run the half marathon, 13 miles. We were told, we were told we couldn't play on team sports. Join us this week as we play in a thousand different team events. Come to our world where we speak from our souls as we demand equality, from our legislators and our educators, for we are the peacemakers. Come to our world where we compete as friends, not enemies, a world where Saudi Arabia and Israel, Latvia, Lithuania, and the Soviet Union are united on our playing fields. Finally, to the athletes, I say to you that within these walls, there is light, your light, and we see for an instant what life on this earth might be, that we could help each other, that we could have victories without victims, that there could be peace. All this we see through you because you are the peacemakers. And I say to you, in words from the ages, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall see God. Good luck, athletes. Good luck. This is a week of spirit and splendor.
Nowhere else on earth does the spark of human endeavor shine more brightly than it does this week of weeks in Connecticut. But every four years, when the stadium is empty and the World Games are over, the question must be asked, what will we take home from this Special Olympiad? First, I say to you Special Olympians, you are the heroes and heroines who have overcome. Go home and tell your countrymen, I am a champion athlete, and I represented my nation before all the world. Train me for work I can do. Train me in computers, in hotels, in factories, in stores. Grant me my humanity. My time is now. My civil rights are today, and I refuse to be lost for another generation. Protect the health of our special families. Demand prenatal care and nutrition for pregnant women so their babies will be healthy and alert. Never, never turn your heads and consign the differently abled to dark places of forgetfulness and pain. Your bravery seen here can become a mighty force against centuries of ignorance, neglect, and oppression. God bless you in these games and in the greatness of your lives. Thank you. I'd like to ask the athletes a question here tonight. Let me ask you this, listen carefully. Do you think that there is anywhere in the world as good a show as you're watching here tonight shown on television around the world. Do you think there's anywhere that has as good a show as this? What do you say? No! Is this the best show of all? Yes! You're right. His Excellency, His Excellency, the Governor General, and Mrs. LeBlanc, the Premier of Ottawa, Michael Harris, Mr. Scott, the Chairman of the Games, Athletes, parents, volunteers, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this spirited, magnificent land of Canada that chose that made the choice to host the 1997 Special Olympics World Winter Games. Thank you, all the citizens of Canada, for honoring the Special Olympians, for honoring the Special Olympians with the largest Winter Games in sports history. 20 years ago, who would have thought that Special Olympians, speed skaters, could reach world-class speeds of 32 kilometers per hour, that you would be skiing down a mountain at up to 64 kilometers an hour, and that you would be trained and have the stamina to compete in a 10-kilometer cross-country skiing competition, and that you would do all of this in front of world television. The whole world is watching you Look how far you've come. But statistics and records alone do not make heroes and heroines. So why now, at the dawning of a new century, have you, the Special Olympic athletes, and your families become our heroes and our heroines? I believe the answer 
I believe the answer is that not only do you embody the uh, original Olympic ideal, but you give living witness to the power of human courage and fortitude of every kind. You have led us to build a volunteer spirit of service and caring and learning unequaled by any other movement in the world, any movement in the world. You have done so not in egotism, not in selfishness, or in bringing humiliation to our great institutions. Instead, you, the Special Olympic athletes, have created ways for all our institutions, whether they be politics, business, social work, religion, to work together and give new purpose and meaning to every life. And so, tonight we praise and thank your parents, your grandparents, your brothers and sisters and guardians. Every family is called upon to make sacrifices in the name of love. But the families of Special Olympics athletes have done much, much more. Each day you demand the civil rights for your children that other families take for granted in education, in employment, and in health. Families, we salute and thank you. And we beg you to continue and fight for these rights with your usual grace and determination and success. And so, in conclusion, athletes, carry us on Eagle's wings and show us now and always your vision, your integrity, your energy, your lives, which prove that all men and women are created equal and are welcome on this earth, saith the Lord God, and that you will never And, and that you will never, never, never let this vision die. Soyez toujours brave. Vous êtes de vrais champions olympiques. Alors, maintenant, donnez le meilleur de vous-même en compétition. Merci beaucoup. Congratulations. To the athletes gathered here, I say to you, look how far you've come. <laughs> 30 years ago, the world said, you are unable to run 100 meters. Today, you run the marathon. 30 years ago, the world said, you must remain hidden away in institutions. Today, you are on international television around the world. Thirty years ago, the world said, you could not make a worthwhile contribution to the community of humanity. Today, you bring together even warring nations on the playing fields of sports. But there is something else as well. Your own strong spirit has helped inspire your mothers and fathers and even your entire communities to join in this extraordinary pilgrimage of hope. Together you have become passionate and convincing messengers of change and you have shown the world the immense power of the voice of families in the public arena. You are teaching all nations the healing power of the human spirit, and you are demonstrating to the entire world that disabled people are not unable, and that each and every person on our planet 
deserves a full and fair chance to make the very most of their own ability. My heart is full this evening to see the countless miracles that the families and the athletes of Special Olympics have accomplished. So welcome to these games and welcome to the better world you have helped to create. Good night, congratulations, and thank you. Tonight in each athlete's story, the Irish dream of freedom and dignity and justice is fulfilled. Yet even as we celebrate the opening of the largest game in our history of Special Olympics, and the extraordinary athletes of Special Olympics, we cannot pause in our effort. We must remember that there are 170 million people with intellectual problems in the world, people who continue to suffer unmentionable disabilities. Think for a moment of those who are not here tonight, those in South Africa, who sit alone in a cold institution. Those in China who may never put a backpack and go to school. And those in Washington, D.C., where I live, who cry at night because they do not understand. They do not understand why they have no friends. Think of the families. Think of the mothers who love their children but feel so desperately alone. <laughs> Their children have done nothing wrong, committed no crime, and perpetuated no injustice. They are the world's most innocent victims, and they suffer only because they are different. The world said that people with intellectual problems should not be seen in public. Tonight, you are part of the year's largest sporting event, and the world is watching. If you seek joy, come see the Special Olympians. If you seek peace and understanding, come see the athletes of Special Olympics. And if you seek courage or skill or strength, you come and see the athletes of Special Olympics. You are an example for the whole world. <laughs>